Okay, Ombre. thank you. Welcome to the official um, press conference of Vodacom Bulls versus the DHL Western Province. Um, the floor is open. Uh, Jake, um, good afternoon. Uh, you going up against uh, a resilient Western Province side. Your thoughts on their team for this weekend and what you'd be expecting from them? Uh, yeah, Nathan, I mean, I suppose what I'm expecting is uh, it's a semi-final and they played really well last week and they'll want to try and play the same kind of rugby. So, yeah, we've obviously got to make sure that we, you know, we're good enough. Um, and those games in Northern Transvaal, Western Province or Blue Bulls, Northern, I mean, Western Province have always been tough games and I've, I'm expecting no different. I'm expecting nothing, nothing different, uh, especially as because it's knockout rugby. Um, last two questions, Jake. I remember speaking to you about the potential signings last week. Next month, you sign a Bok veteran, Bismarck. Uh, will he be one of many signings, especially for the upcoming United uh, Rugby Champs? Not that you guys need more uh, players, as you could potentially field two competitive sides with your current squad. Yeah, Nathan, look, I mean, I must, on the record, we haven't completed that signing. I mean, that's all speculation at this stage as well. I mean, obviously, we've had meetings. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's the kind of play we want to get back. I've told you many times, as I have to all the other media, you know, it's a tough comp in the north. I've been I've been there, I've coached there. Um, and you need depth, you need experience, you need guys who've been there and played in those conditions. So those kind of guys like him, like Jacques, you know, Duplessis, like, uh, you know, obviously Johan Goersen, like guys like Harold Foster, you know, that have got experience. Um, it's important that we get that we get those sort of guys involved. So... Yeah, I mean, uh, it is, it is. And, and uh, like you say, two, two teams from January, that looks like the Curry Cup's going to start. And then you need two quality teams to play week in and week out. Okay, right, Jake. Then last one, I just spoke to Dobbo before the presser and he stated what he'd be expecting from a well-settled bullside, as Aaron's the captain said. Jake, we know playoffs are less flashy and more conservative with the more likely option of a, of a three rather than a potential seven-pointer. Would you guys be changing the game tactics in the playoffs or will we be expecting the same ruthless uh, mentality of the Bulls? Sorry, Nathan, just repeat that. I didn't quite understand what, what Dobbo told you because I, it sounded like he was talking about his own team. <laughs> he, was, he was saying a well-settled Bulls side. Yes. Um, that's what uh, Adams, the, the captain, said. Yes. Um. So let me, let me carry on, Jake. Uh, we know playoffs are less flashy and more conservative with more yes. likely option of a yes. three rather than a potential seven pointer mm. would you guys be changing the game tactics in the playoffs or will we be expecting the same ruthless mentality of the bulls look nathan i mean it's knockout rugby but at the same time you've got to back yourself to win games i think we've scored more bonus points than any other team this year um you know so it's working for us um we scored four or five tries against most opposition so again you know it's not it's far from conservative um and I'm expecting that it'll be a nice game of rugby because the Stormers last week played for the first time in a long time to score four tries. Uh, and it was exciting on seeing how they could actually, you know, play that brand of rugby. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's not one or the other. I think the reality is the situation uh, takes care of itself. You know, if you're dominating and you think you can kick for the corner and score points by, by, by scoring tries, you'll do that. If you feel like you can't get through that way, you probably take the three. So, yeah, I mean, there's no there's no fixed recipe to how it works in a game. I think... You trust the players, you know, on the field to get a feel for exactly what's needed. All right, thanks, Jake. Thank you. everyone. Uh, everyone talks about Evan Ruiz, and uh, apparently he will not play on Saturday. But um, uh, Dion Fury showed the last few games the enormous effect a, a really good fixture can have on, on a game. Mm. How do you eliminate a, a guy like him? You pick Marcel Kutsia. <laughs> okay, good answer. Okay. Hi, Jake. Um, Ruan Norkia in your starting lineup. Um, he is probably also one of those players that you have a long term engagement with, and especially the United Rugby Championships coming up. Yeah, Simon, I mean, I rate him highly. I mean, all of you guys have seen his growth in a short space of time as well. Um, I mean, you just have to look at the 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 players that are playing for Stormers now without May Hazen, without J.D. Schickeling, without Murat, without Marvin Ori. I mean, you've got to give credit to those two locks that are playing now. I mean, two guys like Van Rijn and and obviously uh, Peter Steff's younger brother. I mean, them playing lock there, you know, just shows the importance of having locks, you know. So while we've got guys like Ruan and Jacques Duplessis and, uh, 
and Yanku Swanapul. I mean, obviously, we're very, very you know, happy that we've got their services at this important time of the season. And you're quite right. I mean, he's grown a lot in one year. I'm quite keen to see you know, how the next couple of seasons add up. But saying that, he's got a big job ahead of him on, on Friday night. Zach, and the uh, tension must be quite high at the moment. I mean, it's um, knockout rugby and you've, you're the holders of the cup. Um, it's, it's a forthcoming question. Uh, obviously, um, how, how's preparation going um, on, 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 a, on a broader spectrum and stuff like that? I mean, if you feel the, a team like this with you, your impact players, it, it looks like uh, you're there and thereabouts. Yeah, Simon. Look, I mean, I, I must say, I don't. Uh, I think the pressure comes on its own anyway. I'm I'm very confident. The players are very confident. We've, you know, we've we've played consistently throughout the year. Um, you know, nothing's going to change. We we you know we prepared as well as we can. I think it's now important just to relax and and trust the fact that we've done enough preparation for us to get a result tomorrow. Um, and yeah, I mean, as I said, the pressure comes on its own. The nice thing about this group is they had the same pressure last year uh, and they came through it with flying colours. So I'm expecting the same. You know, we've got a couple of wiser heads now as well that have joined us. So yeah, Simon, it's, uh, you know, I, I, don't think, I don't think I need to say anything. The players know, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's knockout. But it's exciting time. You know, this is why we play rugby. We want to be in these games. I think... Uh, yeah, you know, there's nothing worse than playing. You know, when I coached overseas, you play. Some teams play for relegation every year to stay up in the Premiership or to stay up in the top 14 or to stay up in the Japanese top league. You know, where you want to be at the end of every competition is in is in the playoffs, and that's why it's so exciting. So, yeah, Simon, I, I don't want to sound over over confident, but I, I'm I'm very confident that the reality is we've we've done our work. We've got a we've got a squad that have worked together and. You know, I trust that if we just play as well as we can, you know, that we, we, that we don't have to then worry too much about being too nervous. Frank, having said that, um, Dobbo was quick to take the underdog tag and saying no one's giving Provis a chance and they're just going to go out and play their game and they're not actually worried about the result. Yeah. Is there a danger that, that, that your team may be but overconfident mm. or be caught cold like the Sharks were last week, although the Sharks really... They didn't have to win to get to the semi-final, but, yeah. you know, obviously an uh, actual semi-final. Yeah, different. Ashwak, look, I mean, I must say, I know you guys are waiting for a one-liner that you can put in the front page of newspapers. I mean, the reality is, uh, Dobbo said he's got nothing to lose. I mean, he's got lots to lose. I mean, the reality is we don't get to here and then lose. You know? So we're the same. We're exactly the same. We're not going to use lines like we've got nothing to lose. We, of course, you got to lose. That's why it's a knockout game. And... Uh, I think uh, the lesson we learned is that everyone didn't think Province with that team they picked last week had a chance of beating Durb uh, beat the Sharks in Durban, and they didn't just win, they won convincingly. So, yeah, sometimes those things also help other teams prepare, you know. So, yeah, we won't, we won't be going into this game thinking that uh, that's a, you know, a Province team that we can just roll over. I mean, the mere fact that they actually played like they did last week, they've got confidence um, they, you know, as I said, they they will they will be throwing everything at us, and we've just got to make sure we're good enough. Jake, uh, Yanya, you, you've been in a few uh, playoff games over the years, uh, semi-finals and finals. Um, what what are the, the the key differences in games like this? Uh, what what is the difference between winning and losing in, in playoffs like this? Yeah, Jan, I, I, it's interesting. I, I think the thing that's important is trust. I think you got to trust what you've done, you know. And uh, you can't overcoach now. I mean, now whatever you, you can't, you know, you, all of a sudden you can't spend two weeks trying to coach them things you should have got in the beginning. So, yeah, I mean, I've, I've trust in what we've done. You know, I've trust in the way we've prepared. I've trust in the, the combinations we've played throughout the season and tried different ones. And, you know, I think, you know, Jan, you've been in rugby also a long time. I think players pick that up. If they see that the, the you know, the staff and that the coaching staff and that the people around the team are, are, are confident and also comfortable and also relaxed, you know, there's nothing more we can do between now and tomorrow night for the result to take care of itself. You know? So, you know, I just, as I said, I've been in a lot of knockout games, a lot of finals, a lot of semifinals. You know, I've just got to trust the fact that each player does what he has to do and, and, you know, whatever you've taught them, they do as well as they can. And, and I'm, I'm convinced if that's the case, we'll be good enough to win. Jake, sorry, this was asked earlier, but um, Jan Hendrik Vessels man of the match two tries and now he's on the bench. <laughs> yeah, it's, tough school at, uh, it's a tough school at the Bulls, Ashfaq. It's a tough school. <laughs>
Jake, ek wil, ek wil graag vraag oor die um, uh, oorhandeling met Bismarck. Um, as my sociale media kyk, is dan nog steeds die mening dat die bille succes koop. Is dit vir jou vreemd dat hy sien ek stel buiten is in die beroeps era wat alle spanne spelers koop so ver as moendlik om vir die succes te verseker? Ja, Kubus, ek dink, I mean, ek is blij jy vraag my dit. I mean, einde van die dag, en ek dink, Edgar, ons sê jou en ons president sê die selde ding elke week, en ek dink, is belangrijk dat mense dit verstaan. Elke span het die geleentheid om 60 miljoen te spandeer en een squad by mekaar te sit. Elke span kan werving doen van waar wa ook al hulle wil. Jy weet, as oorseese spelers of, of spelers wat uit contract uitkom, Jy weet, so die, doel, die, doel, die doelpale is nie anders te vir ons nie. Die feit dat ons die spelers kan betrek en die spelers wil deel wees van die bille, jy weet, en dit, en dit beteken jy gaan sukses kry of jy kry een geleentheid om sukses te behaal, dan is het maar so. Jy weet, so, jy, weet jy, kan nooit, jy kan nooit allemaal gelukkig hou nie. Op die einde van die dag is dit wat eindelijk interessant is in Zuid-Afrika. Jy kry Bulls ondersteuners, jy kry WP ondersteuners, jy kry Sharks ondersteuners. Allemaal het hulle spanne, vrystad ondersteuners. Jy weet, allemaal is lief hulle spanne, allemaal, jy weet, support hulle spanne. Maar ek dink wat belangrijk is, Kobus, is, soos ek sê, daar 60 miljoen en hoe die hy daai 60 miljoen spandeer, ek is net gelukkig en baie bevoorrecht dat baie van die spelers wil deelwees van hierdie kultuur, baie van die, die spelers wil deelwees van die bille. Jy weet, en as dit beteken ons gaan succesvol wees, dan is ek, jy weet, dan is ek nog blijer. So, ja, ek, ek is nie negatief daar oor nie. Ek, jy weet, ek wil, al die, ek wil al die beste spelers in die wereld kry om vir die bille te speel en elke jaar probeer om alles te win. Jy weet, as is, is dit nie wat eindelijk die doelwitte van elke span in die wereld is nie? Jack, sorry, I, I know, uh, can I ask you to repeat that in English? I mean, the, the reasoning behind you just explained yeah. uh, your uh, Jeez, Jan, strategy. I must say, um, I, I only speak float Afrikaans now, Jan. So, uh, no, 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 it's, um, yeah, I think, uh, in English, Jan, you know, I think the, there's a lot of there are a lot of people speaking out there about you know bulls and players and buying players. I think what's important to understand is that our CEO Edgar, our president Willem, has said it many many times, and I'm just repeating the the same message. The the landscape is exactly the same for every franchise. It's exactly the same. You spend 60 million. You do you do recruiting from anywhere in the world. You can people come out of contract. Your job is to find out whether they you know whether they're available to join the bulls. No different to us. You know, I'm very fortunate, very blessed, and I suppose very, I suppose very humbled by the fact that a lot of guys want to come to the Bulls. A lot of guys contact me, and they want to be part of this club, and and you know they they see the same um, uh, vision and mission that we want. We want to be the best rugby football club side in the world, um, and you know if that if that means that you you win, that's fantastic because at the end of the day, that's that's what the goal is. The goal is to for every franchise to recruit the best players, to have the best staff. To win as many trophies as you can, you know it's not just in rugby union. You look at, you know, I saw Ronaldo sign for Man United the other day. You know the reality is, the the world in sport is about getting the best players and creating the best teams and creating legacies. And and you know I'm repeating myself in English now, but that's all we want to do. We want to make sure that we get bull supporters, shock supporters, you know, lion supporters, uh, free state supporters. We want to make sure that our supporters are proud of our team and that we, you know, give our supporters reason to support us, you know, week in and week out by winning as many times as we can. Okay, just on, the, on that vein, um, uh, we've okay. spoken about the hookers many, many This is a, a perfect example of um, the the follow-up question that I can ask about that. You, um, Bismarck is, is um, probably on the verge of to be signed, and it's just a official uh, matter now. But... You had Skull Brits pre- previously, and Skull Brits was also uh, a Springbok taken on in the 2019 competition. Yes. But you have Grobis in the um, um, Springbok setup at the moment. You've got Jan Hendrik, you've got Skull. So um, the, the question that, that probably, one of the many questions that probably come from that is there they, they sh- they should obviously be a buy in from the seniors, like if uh, Bismarck comes into the poll. There, there has to be some kind of an agreement. Is it a mentorship? Will he play, etc., uh, etc.? Et so, so there has to be some kind of an understanding. Um, do, I, do I get you um, the, 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 the gist of how you yeah. reason? Because that's how I've followed you up until now. Simon, you 100% spot on. You know that's why I said he hasn't signed yet, and you can read in between the lines. Um, 
We haven't committed to him yet because obviously that's very important. I mean, the, exactly that reason. You know, I want to just quickly just remind you guys, we were in Benetton when our, when our side played at home against Province and lost 40-something points to 20. Uh, and it just proved to me that you're going to need different types of players for different competitions. And, and again, I'm very fortunate, Simon, that my board and that my president and my CEO understood that. Thank goodness they were with me in Benetton and they got to experience firsthand what it felt like to lose twice on one weekend. Um, and so part of it is creating depth. Is If Juan Hendrik Vessels is going to stay at home when we're in Benetton and learn from Bismarck Duplessis in a big crunch game at Loftus, then, then that is a role that Bismarck will be giving. If, if we feel that Bismarck is away in Benetton and he's now teaching uh, Joe, Joe Van Sale or Skalke Rasmus what it's like to play overseas in rainy weather in Connacht, you know, then, then the reality is that's the lesson that coaches and, and players need to buy into. So, Simon, 100% spot on. You know, I think every player, senior player, needs to come in, understand his role, uh, buy into the fact that he's 100% happy with that role and it's not going to change. Um, and and that's 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 part of the th of the the theory that we're putting together as a as a union. So, you know, I know I've got a, I've got a job for I've got a job for him. What's really nice for me, Simon, is he's an old grey. Uh, Jan Hendrik is an old grey. There's probably a little bit of emotional uh, attachment between the two as well, in that he would like to be part of growing another grey boy to become a hooker for South Africa. Uh, and if that's the case, Simon, then then I'm happy. So. Yeah, without getting too technical, but those are the sort of things we discuss in our meetings. And it's almost like when you asked me that question, it was like you were sitting in a, in a, in an interview meeting with myself, Edgar, and one of the players. That I just need to know where their headspace is, how they feel, and it's not only about the Bismarcks. It's about all the players that we bring to the club. Is you know what is it that they want out of it, and what is it that we want out, and making sure that everyone's happy, so that there's no miscommunication or you know. Or, or, or suppose a uh, feeling of, of let down either way. Uh, Jack, you just mentioned that... Um, it's not a big deal of 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 Wat sal is jullie bijvoorbeeld geleer as een gunsteling in Benetton wat jullie in Morrisse van Morrisse en waarschijnlijk een finaal in die Karibiker kan neem? Well, kom ek stel het so, Percival, wat ons daar geleer het, twee lesse. Eén is, ons het twee keer die zaterdag verloor, so as een enie het ons een les geleer van ons werving vir diepte. En ek het nou net dat, dat die antwoord gegee vir die, vir die media. Die tweede ding wat belangrijk is, is, jy weet, ons het een finaal verloor daar, jy weet, ons het een kans daar gehad om een beker te wen, ons het nie die ding deurgetrek nie, en dit maak seer, so, jy weet, hierdie groepspelers het nou die gevoel gekry van hoe dit voel om nie een beker te wen, vooral in die laaste strijd van die wedstrijd, of vooral in die laaste hoek van die, ek weet nie hoe dit in Afrika gaan sê nie, maar, jy weet, op die laaste stretch het ons die ding laat val, so, die lesse is, ek, ek, jy het seer gemaakt, en ek, en ek hoop die lesse, jy weet, het seer genoeg gemaakt om seker te maak, ons het twee weke nou Om, om nog een beker te wen en om een kans te gee om vir die billes om ons eens laat trots te voel en ons moet seker maak ons krijg dit recht morgen. Uh, Jake, you just mentioned that uh, Bismarck should help uh, uh, Jan Hendrik to become another Springbok hooker. Is that your final position on Jan Hendrik where he will become a Springbok or are you still in doubt? Uh, look, I'm not in doubt at all, Carl. I think I've coached lots of guys that I know. I mean, he's going to be a springbok. It's just a question of when, you know. And uh, I think if he played prop, he'd probably become a springbok as well. But I think props, if you look at the abundance of props, I mean, and, and again, you've seen what's happened in the last month. They moved our tight head prop to loose head prop, and now all of a sudden he's a loose head prop. And, and again, shows, it, shows, it shows a massive amount, amount, massive amounts of talent that Trevor's got. Um, and if you look at some Piwi that we're bringing through now, and we're bringing Gerard Steenkamp through, and you you go through the list, Oxen Chair that's at the Lion, I mean at the Sharks, and you know you go Tisa Tolis that's at the Lions, then then the picking order for a guy like Jan Hendrik, who's 20 years old or you know still relatively young, it's a long time for him to actually shoot past those guys. So to answer your question, Carl, you know I I I'm trying to find a way in which that he can you know he can find the shortest route to become a springbok. I did the same with John Smith. You know, John Smith was a tight head prop and I just saw that 
age wise, you know, he would have made it, but he needed to he needed to be fast track in a position where I thought that he could he could play at that level, you know. So, you know, Federico Mendes the same. I think Sean Fitzpatrick was a tight head prop as well, moved to Hooker when he when he was a youngster out of under twenties. So it's been done before. Um yeah, and I don't, as when I'm answering it like this, I'm sort of feeling like you're holding me over a barrel. Is this like the death wish that he's now going to stay at Uka, you know? I mean, I, I, I think that he's such a good rugby player that I think if I put him at flank, he's probably going to make it as well. So, yeah, I, I rate him and I don't want to talk him up as though he's the only player I have in my group. I'm just finding a way in which in our system we can produce those sort of players because at the end of the day, uh, a successful Bulls team means a successful national team and, and a successful Bulls team means players get exposure into the national setup. So, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm fully sure that if we keep him there and we trust him and we, and, we, and we support him and he will make mistakes. You know, he made a couple last week against Free State as well, defensively standing in the wrong place, you know, leaving the line out too early, leaving it too late. But, I mean, that's understandable. You know, we don't now chuck him away and start again. We, we're going to try and find a way in which we improve him. Kijk, jammer, ik weet mijn Engels is baie swak, maar mag ik net ook vraag, of, onmoendelijk hier al in Afrikaans op vandag, wat staan tussen jou en Bismarckse handtekening, meneer? Uh, nee, een paar, paar dinge, Percival, ik sê een paar dinge, ek, 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 ek wil nie graag, jy weet, ons het nou, ons het nou met hom uh, onderhandel, ons het met hom bykie gepraat oor wat is sy doelwitte, wat is ons doelwitte, en op hierdie stadium, jy weet, um, hy is nou op die plaas, en hy sal terugkom na ons toe, jy weet, daar paar dinge wat hy moet nou ook uitwerk, hy het drie jong kinderkies, nou net teruggekom van, die, van Frankrijk af, um, jy weet, hy, soos ek sê, hy moet nou besluit, wat is sy volgende, jy weet, stap voor en toe, en hoopelik is het om saam met die bille te speel. Jake, uh, just to get back to tomorrow, yes. um, Cornell on the wing, obviously he's a, a very accomplished player there, but uh, in an ideal world, is that where you would have wanted him? And just how badly concussed is Kurt Lee? Yeah. Um, well, okay, a couple of questions there, Ken. I mean, in the ideal world, you know, you want to pick the best team you can on the field. And, and for now, this is the best team we can put on the field from what's available. You know, if you look at Gio, who got injured and, you know, got injured twice, you know, he would be there and thereabouts as an outside back. You know, Kirtley would be there and thereabouts as an outside back. Stedman has spent a lot of time at the sevens. And that combination of him and Cornell that worked really well last year together, um, you know, obviously wasn't the same this year because of the time factor that they didn't spend together. You know, a guy like Marku Janssen van Vieren, who played centre in the final as well, is an option. Um, but we just felt that um, the centre combination of, of Lionel and Harold that have played together I think three Super Rugby finals, you know, many, many Super Rugby games together, many, many training sessions together, offers a little bit more stability for us as a group. I'm talking about from a combination point of view. And Cornell can play wing, um, but there's nothing to stop us from certain plays, standing him in the midfield and, and obviously using his skills as a, as a wing standing at centre. So, and who knows, maybe he might go into centre at the back end of the game and I'll put Stravina on the wing. Um, and then we almost to the back line that we had last year as well. So, yeah, it just depends. It just depends, Ken. I think that, you know, it's, a, it's sometimes a gut feeling um, and the players understand that. You know, we need to know what's needed for this week and everyone's bought in that we probably feel that back line is what we need, especially for this game. Okay, just uh, how badly concussed is Kirby? Oh, uh, yeah. And, yeah, and just sorry to following on from what you answered, um, a guy like Lionel Mapu um, seems to have really added just some incredible small things in midfield there since, since he's arrived. How, how happy have you been with that signing and how he's played? Yeah. Uh, the last so, so, Ken, firstly, I mean, I, the, the head injury is one of those. It, it's, it's, such, it's such a difficult injury to assess because it's not like, a, you know, like a torn ligament or, a, you know, or... A, you know, a contusion, wherever where you sort of have a time frame on how that, that changes or how you can get him back on the field, you know. So once there's physiotherapy, et cetera, et cetera. So where we are now, you know, it, didn't, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. Apparently, it also at sevens, it got a whack on the chin. And uh, and I think what's what we decided to do now with, you know, with lots of rugby coming up is get him to a specialist, let him be checked out. And, and I think also give him peace of mind, Ken. You know, what you don't want to do in a player is that if he feels as though he hasn't really got an answer about why it's happening. And I mean, if you think about it, he had a scrum cap on um, 
and the ball hit him through the scrum cap, um, and and it was a rugby ball. It wasn't even a you know person, and he was lights out. You know, so it isn't it it wasn't a great sign, and I suppose that's why the red flags came up for the for the medical staff. And you know, having having kids his age, the last thing I would like to do is push him through a game where I'm not sure about you know the the, the extent of that injury. So. I'm hoping he's going to go to the specialist and we're hoping that we'll get some sort of specialist uh, advice and feedback as to how serious or how not serious that, that injury is. Um, and then Lionel, Ken, I mean, I, I have, I've never coached him. I didn't really know him well. I mean, I saw him a couple of I've been living overseas for nine years, so I wasn't really, you know, when I was coaching the box, he wasn't around. And when I was overseas, he was coming through the line setup. But Incredible rugby player, incredible guy, um, adds a massive amount of value to the to the team. Um, and I'm I'm I, yeah I'm, I'm I'm sometimes amazed by he's not only a tough guy, you know, he's also got soft skills and he you know he's got great feel. He's uh he understands you know he understands the game you know really well as well. So yeah, it's a massive signing for us, and I've got no doubt that that combination that we've got now is a solid one. Uh, and I've got no doubt. I mean, he could probably even play on the wing if I needed him to play certain games on the wing, um, because he's, he is so talented and he's got such good feel. I think your team was regarded as uh, one of the more disciplined teams earlier in the uh, earlier in the, in, the, in the season, and um, the last few games um, you had a bit of trouble um, with lots of um, penalties. Um, you draw. Um, AJ Jacobs again. Some mm. people would, would say that he was a bit trigger happy last week, mm. especially with those uh, first of those uh, yellow cards. Yes. Um, how do you handle a situation like this? Um, do you talk to him uh, 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 before the game? Um, do you work on your discipline? What what, what because yeah. the discipline will be? I mean, every three points is is is, is uh, vital in a game like this. Yeah. So, of course, I'll give you a bit of feedback. Um, we had a Zoom call with the referees and the and the officials this week with our captains. I think uh, Province had the same, Sharks had the same, and obviously Greek was at the same. So it wasn't preferential treatment at all. It was a great initiative by Mark Lawrence to actually get us to talk about things and, and ask questions. Uh, feedback I got was that they felt they had made a mistake with that yellow card. And again, I'm not uh, dropping them, that they felt that having sent that through to World Rugby, that there was obstruction and they probably... Uh, should have penalised um, Free State for for the obstruction, um, but then saying that, I mean, obviously we got to adapt according to what happens in front of us. Chris. So, you know, the answer to the to what I said to the players and to the, the officials is, we're going to go to Europe soon. We're going to get rough calls. We're going to get referees that see things differently. We're going to, and I would much prefer for us to be strict and get it all right and make sure that we understand what's coming as opposed to letting everything go in the Curry Cup and then getting into the middle of a United Rugby Championships and then finding out that the way we play and the way we interpret it in our laws are different to the way that it's it's uh, refereed in the Northern Hemisphere. So, yeah, of course, it's, uh, it is something that we spoke about. I mean, our penalty count is no different to most other teams. I think that the tackle and the breakdown is an area that's incredibly... Uh, I suppose, strictly blown by everybody. I mean, if you look at that game a couple of weeks ago, Free State versus Pumas, I think they gave away 14 penalties in the first half. So I think it is an area. And, and that, again, of course, is part of having guys like Marcel and Arnu and, you know, Johan Goersen and Harold Foster and that are a little bit older and understand the experience. And hopefully they will, you know, they will be, uh, you know, how can I put it? They'll be calm enough to understand that they... They can't make those kind of mistakes, and they'll help the juniors on the field understand, you know, how to handle that pressure. Okay, final question, please. Anything else, guys? Everyone happy? All good. Cool. Thanks. Thank good luck. You. Thanks, eh? Thanks, 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 Th